worried about what somebody else thinks we might look like or, or what maybe the Bible says that we should look like but we don't actually look like. And, and there's this big struggle that we have. And so I want to challenge you this morning. Hopefully you can take those, those you know, goggles that we like to wear where we don't want to look at ourselves and, and take a minute to be able to view ourselves introspectively, to look into ourselves in light of creation in light of what God has for us, and in light of the calling that God has put on your life, on my life, on, on our lives. And we're going to be starting, as I said, out of Genesis chapter 1 as we do that. If you want to flip open to verse 26 and 27 is where we'll be reading. But before we dive into that, let's start with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for this morning, for this time we can come and look into your word. We thank you for just this beautiful day you've blessed us with and the sunshine, the fresh snow this week. And I pray that you would just just help us as we seek to look a little bit introspectively this morning, as we look to see what it is that you have for us, your calling for us, and what it is that we believe biblically about ourselves. And then how we can actually live those things out, how we can carry out what we believe into the world outside of the walls of this church pray that you would just give us your Holy Spirit, that you would fill us with your wisdom, and that we would live boldly as we serve you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, as I said, we're on Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Now, this is talking about the, uh, the sixth day of creation. We know the cr- world was created in, in seven days, and the sixth day of creation is Genesis 1, 26 through 27. It says, <coughs> Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So, God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And so with those verses, we start into the first thing that we believe. And the first thing that we believe then is that man was created in the image of God. And the verse describes as well some of the responsibilities being created that way or, or being under God's control imbues on us. It says we were created this way so that we may rule over these different creatures on the earth. Now, it was great. This, this lined up perfectly. Last night, Luke spoke and talked a lot about creation, which I had talked about last week at the Wild Game Dinner. And, but at a Wild Game Dinner, you talk about all these things that you take dominion over among the world as you go out and hunt and fish and do all these things and now this morning as we look again at creation it's continuing that that trend that that God has put us to rule over the creatures of the earth we were created this way specifically but we were also created for another reason not just that we were created so that we could be in relationship with God so we believe that we were created to be in relationship with God. So first, that we were created in the image of God, and then that we were created to be in relationship with him or with God. And we, we believe this because of later on in, in Genesis. We read in chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And I know I kind of skipped over a lot of different things there. I'm hoping you guys can fill in some of those blanks. But Adam and Eve are in the garden, and we see God entering, walking in the garden with them. God in the presence of man on the earth, in relationship with them. That's not something we really think about or can, can necessarily process today, but it's something we see at the start that God regularly was in this direct relationship with Adam and Eve. Now, if you know the story, for Adam and Eve, this wasn't like a happy time. 
This wasn't like, oh, they were really excited that God had come to the garden because just before this, they'd made a very bad choice. They'd just eaten from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They, they've hid themselves from God, and then it says that God has entered the garden and, and desires to see them. And so we know that at that point, sin had entered the world. So God took them and, and rid them from this garden, removed them from his presence, because sin has broken that perfect relationship that God desired for us to have. But nonetheless, we believe that we were created to be in this relationship with God. Whether it was torn or not, God created us for that specifically. Now, as we know, this relationship was was torn and, and broken by the sin that Adam and Eve committed. And so because of that, this relationship between God and man had to be destroyed. It had to to break because as we've talked about many times before, God is a holy God. And a holy God cannot have any sin in its presence or it taints that holy God. It, It can't happen. It's not allowed. And so God had to remove the the possibility of that tainting of his holiness and remove the relationship that was there because of the disobedience that Adam and Eve committed. Now, the next few things that we believe kind of almost seem preposterous while I was writing them, like those can't possibly actually be true statements that we believe if we just stop and and look around the world today, but but I'd like to argue a little bit about them for us. The, The next thing that we believe is that mankind was created, created to live in harmony with one another. Now, that's... That can't be right. Just look at look at the family unit you have. There's not harmony even within, you know, this tight knit bound people who only have relationships with each other in this tight way. There's there's not harmony there. How was all of mankind created to live in harmony with each other? How can we actually even comprehend what that would look like? Even in the terms of the Bible, we never actually see that happen. Right? As soon as Adam and Eve leave the garden, what's the next chapter titled? Cain and Abel. And we all know how that story goes. Right? Cain killed Abel. There was not harmony there when when they left. It was from day one, chapter one outside of the garden. They're already killing each other. And, And from then on, we've never seen that stop. We've never seen this concept of of harmony among mankind, this idea of of world peace at all. And and from what we read, even into the future of of the the prophecies forward, it's not something we're going to see happen on this earth. This isn't a, a reality, but either way, we believe that God created mankind to live in harmony with each other and the reason that we believe that is because we believe that God created man good and this is the crux of why we believe that we were created to be in harmony with each other we read in Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 now this is the end of God creating things it says God saw all that he had made And it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. You see, all that God created, all that God creates is very good. This is a part of being God. The things that he creates are inherently good. That's the only option that he has in regards to how he creates things. And within this, God creates created in man something different than the rest of the the things that he created we're not like the plants or the animals or or rocks or or stars man was given something different and we call that difference free will man was given the choice when adam and eve were put in the garden god said don't eat of this tree but he didn't stop them from eating from the tree he just told them not to 
There was a choice then that they were required to make. Would they obey God or, or would they not? Humans made the wrong choice there. And so continue to constantly make that wrong choice of, of disobedience towards God. Yet, yet God still made them different. We read in Psalms chapter 8, verse 4, it says, What is mankind that you are mindful of them? human beings, that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hand. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds of the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. See, God created us different. He made us a little lower than the angels. He gave us a crown of, of glory and honor. We didn't come from animals through evolution. We were created specifically and differently than everything else and given a free will to make that choice. Initially, we were, however, created good. We were created good to live in harmony with one another. And that's why we believe that. Now the next thing that we believe is that God has created us to work. But God also has created us to rest. We read God talking to Adam in the garden. And actually one of the first things that he does after he's created Adam is gives him a task. He says in Genesis chapter 2, Verse 19, now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the animals and all the birds. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. We see man immediately having a job, having a requirement, having a task set before him that he was supposed to do. And we believe then that we were created to work. But it doesn't stop there. After the creation, after the work, we see something that God did. He, he created this, this concept called rest as well. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, it says, By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So, on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. And then later on we actually see God continuing to give that example to his people Israel, specifically through the fourth commandment given to Moses. It says in Exodus chapter 20 verse 8, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work. And that's why we rest one day of the week. Now, yes, there is very obvious discussion that people have over which day of the week that's supposed to be. For all of us here, we believe that day is, is Sunday. And we believe that because that was the day Jesus was raised from the dead. And so we recognize that as the day fulfilled and, and celebrate that then as our Sabbath. However, there are still plenty of people groups around the world, even in America, that, that believe, no, Sunday's not the Sabbath. Saturday is the Sabbath. And they still worship and celebrate a day of rest on Saturday. I don't really want to put an emphasis on which one of those is right by any means. We can ask God when we get to heaven someday. But either way, I think the emphasis is that we need to stop. We need to rest. We need to, to take a day and reset and recover and allow the work that we do these six days to be done and, and take a break. S to, to spend this time in thanks to God for all that he's done for us, remembering the Sabbath day and keeping it holy, remembering what Christ did in creation and, and recognizing who God is and celebrating him. 
So yes, we were created to work. In six days, we see that. But I don't want to lose the emphasis that we were also created to rest. Now, the next thing we believe is that there is both man and women, which is funny you have to emphasize that today in society, but there is man and women, and we believe that men and women were created for each other to live in loving and helpful relationships with each other. We read in Genesis 2, verse 20, but for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. So we see the creation of woman out of man, and we see man's response to this. This is now bone of my bone and, and flesh of my flesh. God made men and women to be in a loving relationship where the two become one flesh, just as woman was made out of man. The Bible then continually guides this relationship as it moves forward in regards to how men and women should treat one another, specifically with love and respect. We read out of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. This is Paul talking to a married couple. He says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Then in verse 33, that's 12 verses later, he says, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. And there we see that emphasis of love and respect. Now there's, as I said, 12 verses between verse 21 and 33, and they're all really, really good. So I want to put an emphasis on those in relationships or married or, or whatever. Take some time to read those, maybe regularly, maybe to one another. And then practice what it is that they say. But this verse continues to point out that men and women were made for each other as well as made to be in a loving and helpful relationship with one another. And then to close, the, the final piece, the final thing that we have is that we believe that the image of God in all its fullness has been revealed to us through Jesus Christ, in whom we find our true humanity. And we find this spelled out for us through the whole Bible, but we'll look specifically at the book of Romans because Paul does an excellent job in, in Romans defining how this actually works. We'll just be looking this morning at verse 29, but the whole chapter 8 of Romans talks about this topic. Verse 29 of chapter 8 of Romans says, For those God foreknew, he also predestined, to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Christ came and was the perfect man. He was perfect. His life revealed to us what a good, perfect man should look like, what a good, perfect man that God created should be. In initially, God created man perfect. He created him blameless and in a perfect relationship with him. And we see Jesus as the fulfillment of that. He did that when he was here on this earth, where the, the rest of us humans have all fell. We've all sinned. We've all made ourselves imperfect and, and fallen out of relationship with God. But because of what Jesus did, he worked in a way that fulfilled a plan that God had, a plan where he sent Jesus to earth, his one and only son, to be the perfect man. And we see written, just as one man sinned and all fell into sin, so one perfect man cleansed all men and brought them into perfection. 
You see, Jesus was the perfect man. He came so that we could see the fullness of God revealed in man. And so that we could be conformed then to this image. Christ came and died so that we could again be in right relationship with God. And so that Christ might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. That's the Christians. That's us, these brothers and sisters walking alongside with Christ, the head. We're heirs with Christ if we choose to follow him. And if we do that, one day we will join the Father and live in heaven with him forever. Now I want to close with a word of prayer, and and after that, the elders, as well as those up for lot selection, can come forward and we'll move forward with that process. So let's say a word of prayer here. God, we thank you for this morning, for this time we can look into your word and to what it says about man and to how you created us and the calling that you have for us to live as Christ lived in harmony with one another, in perfect relationship with you, in loving relationships with our spouse, that we were created good, that we should strive to live that way. Help us just to always seek to follow you, to live the life that you have for us, the calling that you have for us, and do it in a way that honor and glorifies you. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Everybody else is on the hot seat now. So I'll kind of walk through uh, the process just for those any of those who aren't clear. So we do a lot selection for elders, elder or the, the nominees. If you want to come stand over here, that would be great over here by Ruth. Um, so this morning, you guys are good there. I'll just tell you all where to go. It's fine. Um, yeah, if you guys want to swap these around. So this morning, Lowell and I made up some slips of paper that we have put in these hymnals. Uh, we both mixed them up after we put them in. Uh, Lowell brought them up, put them on the table. Now if each of the elders can come swap them around, that would be great. We, we'd like to try and keep this as much out of our hands as possible. And so beyond that, then we have in this uh, numbers one through four. And we'll go to each of these, and they'll draw a number out, and that will be the turn order in which they'll pick one of the hymnals. Now, we're looking for for one elder this morning. You want to give this one? We're looking for one elder this morning. Um, And so we have three slips that are white that say you were not selected to be an elder at this time. We have one slip that would be purple that says you are selected to be an elder at this time. Um, We'll have number one go first. Everyone will take one of the hymnals, and then we'll open them all at the same time. I believe the the song was number 118, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. And so if you flip to that, you'll find the, the slip there, and whoever has the purple slip is signed up. So, um... Yeah, I don't know which one of you got number one or Mr. Haskin, you are up. So after it's determined who is, we'll do a a prayer over everyone. Those who haven't selected, we like to take the stance that God has another calling for you at this time, that don't sit idle and stagnant and wait till next year to try again, but he's got something active for you to be doing today and, and look for that because that's what as Christians we should be doing is looking for the way that we are advancing the kingdom. So you guys want to come a little bit further up front instead of hiding in the corner? 
Come on. Come on. There you go. All right. Yeah, feel free to uh, open to 118 then. All right. John Haskin has been selected as the new elder. He'll be joining Dan, John, and Brian on the elder board. Um, Lou and I will be as associate pastors with you guys. Um, but yeah, if you guys would, would gather around and let's say a word of prayer over everybody. Let me grab the mic. more than just me to pray if you guys are all right with that (coughs) thank you father for this process that you've helped us establish and we trust in you and that you're working through this process and we ask that you would go with us that you would help us to accomplish in this community what you have for us and that this is going to fulfill your desire for us and that we would encourage each person represented. Lord God, uh, we are grateful for your presence with us, grateful for the calling that you have for each and every one. Uh, are grateful that uh, you will continue to lead and guide and direct their ways, Lord. And so we rejoice in that. Thanks for the calling. Thanks for hey God, again, we, we thank you for just this opportunity for these these willing people who desire to to serve this church and, and your church, God, I pray that we would constantly be looking to advance it forward, to be furthering your kingdom, to be about our Father's business. And I pray that that this group would, would look at that, those who've been selected and those who haven't, God, that they would as well look at this church and look for ways that you have for them to work in this church, to to further your kingdom through it and to, to preach your gospel wherever it is that you have called them to go. We thank you for this time that we can have this morning. We pray that, that we would always be looking to glorify and, and worship you as creator of, of the world and of, of man as well. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So worship team, if you'd like to uh, come forward and close us with our closing song before we get too far away, Brian. And, you know, God just didn't create bodies. The, the Bible doesn't really tell us too much about all those details. And I was thinking cells, nerves. Skin, you know, muscles, everything, and then plus a soul to think and feel, and and then a spirit that will live forever. All of that. He is an awesome God. And kids, we're gonna need some help on this last song. So all the kids, especially the girls that were practicing earlier, come on up. And you can stand either on the steps, especially you girls that were helping to lead, or death right down in front so anybody is welcome all right let's stand and sing how awesome is our god we got some pretty amazing little creations right here too we're gonna sing it three times and the second time we'll do it a cappella.
Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. 